What's good? It's your girl back at it again with another video. This one is going to be a 1920s flapper and we're just going to jump right into it. I'm going to start off with a liquid foundation. Back then, they didn't really use that much liquid makeup. Um, they did use like cake makeup for theater because film was becoming more popular, silent film. So I'm just setting down a base of the liquid and then topping it off with powder because powder was the thing that was most primarily used. Um, I just want that extra bit of coverage. And I'm also going to cover my lips because we're going to sort of change the shape of the lip. <laughs> Maybe I put a little bit too much of it. So now that I have that layer of liquid foundation, I'm taking a powder foundation with a bigger brush and I'm pressing that into the skin to really create that matte, fuller coverage look. Now the good thing about this Halloween makeup is that you really don't need that much product. You can just work with a little amount. It's back then, you know, they didn't really have that much. And I think nowadays we're so used to putting so much makeup on because we have so many other options and products that uh, it's sort of like a habit to be like, okay, I need 20 million things to do this, but really, I'm like, I don't know. And with my finger, I'm just going to dip into that powder and go under my eyes. I'm not going to cover them up all the way because I'm going to add dark shadow and um, I just want to keep it light under the eyes. So now for the eyebrows, I'm going to go back in with the foundation, just a little tiny bit on my finger, and brush over the brow because I'm going to thin them out ever so slightly. 1920s eyebrows were really, really thin, honestly. I don't really know what they were thinking because it was not a cute look, <laughs> but they were basically like two thin little lines. Um, so I'm going to do that as best as I can with my brow shape. You can also take glue or a glue stick and um, put that over your eyebrows, put foundation over top, and then draw them on. I'm just going to thin them out a little bit with pencil. So I am taking my eyebrow pencil and drawing a very defined line going all the way down. And now taking a flat paddle brush and going in with concealer, I'm going to go underneath that line that I drew over my brow hairs and further thinning that out a little bit more. For the blush back then, they did it in sort of a circular round shape. A little bit underneath the cheekbone and it was very pigmented as well so I am taking a cream blush this one in particular is from Glossier and I'm going to smile and dab pretty much directly under the cheekbone and really not being afraid to <clears throat> add quite a bit And then you can also put some on the ears. I used to do that back then. On the ear lobes. Bit on the nose too. Temples. Just pretty much everywhere on the face. They were about that rouge. I'm not going to put any highlighter on. For me it's like, <sighs> no highlighter. But <laughs> I'm pretty sure they didn't really have our modern day standards of highlight in those days. Now we're just going to go straight in onto the eyes. I'm going to keep the eyes very simple because once again, we didn't really have 20 million things that we have nowadays. So I'm just going to take a cream eyeshadow pencil. This one is in a gray color, but I will be topping it off with a darker brown. So that particular shade doesn't really matter. Um, any sort of dark cream eyeshadow will work just fine. And I've seen a lot of tutorials where people sort of do 
dark black all over the eyes and sort of like a rim around. You can definitely do that, but I think from what I've observed in pictures of 1920s women, it was more so just like sticking around the upper and lower lash line, keeping the darkest parts of whatever color you're using right there, and then sort of diffusing it outwards. But, um, you know, you can use, look up pictures and reference things for yourself too. I'm just going to stick to this shape for now. So once I'm good with that, I'm going to take a sort of medium shaped tapered fluffy brush and I'm going into a dark brown color. This one in particular is from the Anastasia um, Soft Glam Palette, but any matte dark brown will work just fine. And I'm going to go over that cream pencil, focusing it mostly on uh, the area closest to the upper and lower lash lines, but also sort of smudging it upwards. Another thing that I noticed in 1920s makeup is that they had really, uh, it was a big trend to do sort of downward shaping droopy eyes, similar to the style that Clara Bow back then had. So I'm also dragging that color a little bit downward. Now I'm taking a bigger fluffy brush and going over those edges a little bit blending everything downwards rather than upwards. And so I'm pretty pleased with the way that that looks. Um, I'm not doing anything super over the top. You can of course, as always, add or subtract more. Um, I'm going to be going in with mascara now and back then they had, actually Besame has a product that's exactly like the thing that they used to have in the 1920s where they used a little box of a powder mascara and then it came with a little brush and so you would wet the powder and then put the brush in the powder and put it on your eyes and it was called cake mascara. Uh, you could use that if you're really trying to dedicate to the look but I'm using my standard mascara wand just putting a very light coat. So for the lips, a really great reference to look at is Clara Bow. She was an actress in the 1920s, and the lip shape of the 20s is very interesting. It was sort of like, it was quite thin and in this almost like heart shape. It was very pouty and very uh, coquette-like. I'm taking the Fenty lipstick in Shoddy, and I think this is a very good tone for this 1920s lip, that deep, deep, rich, dark red. I'm going to focus most of the color in the center and then take my finger and spread it out and then making sure I really define the cupid's bow. One more thing I forgot to do, I'm going to really define my moles. Um, and that sort of movie star-esque way. So when it comes to the hair, if you have longer hair like mine, what I would suggest is I'm going to take it, flip it up, so creating this sort of faux bob, and I'm going to take a um, uh, I don't know what it's called, alligator clip, crocodile clip, whatever, and I'm just going to pin my hair like that. For an accessory, I'm going to use this choker. Oh, if I could pin it in my hair, that'd be great. <laughs> And literally improvising with that is a great way to 
add a little bit of pizzazz to the look and make it look a little bit more authentic. Okay, so when it comes to the outfit, both of these pieces are thrifted. I've got this black velvet coat jacket thing that I thought worked well for the look. And then the star of the show is this red fringe dress that honestly is the perfect piece for this particular costume because when you dance like the fringe jumps around so you could do the charleston and it's it's just really cute and then i'm also wearing these sheer black tights and these low-heeled shoes that i thrifted as well so that is it for my flapper 1920s <laughs> last minute halloween tutorial i hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Ciao.